Hey guys, Brett from Imperial Workshop here. Today we're going to be showing you how to program your Sabre. Just as a quick disclaimer, we recommend doing this on a Windows operating system rather than a Mac operating system to prevent any issues from occurring. Today we're going to be taking apart our scavenger hilt. To learn how to take apart our other hilts, please check out the videos on our YouTube channel. The first thing you're going to want to do is remove the handle off of the hilt. After doing this, you need to make sure to remove the battery before touching the SD card. Failing to do this could cause the SD card to become corrupt when taking it out of the saber. You can take the battery out by hitting it against your hand or very carefully tapping it on a hard surface. Now we have two different core variations. For the purpose of this video, we're going to call them Type A and Type B. We're going to show you how to take the SD card out of both of these variations. To remove the SD card from variation Type A, slide down on the SD card and you can remove it from the core. For variation type B, you'll need to slide up on the cover above the SD card. After sliding this up, the cover should hinge off and you can remove the SD card from the core. So now that you've gotten the SD card out of your core, we're going to take our SD card reader. And put the SD card into the back. From here, we're going to go to our computer, plug this in, and start programming. After putting the SD card into the computer, you're going to want to open up your file explorer. After opening the file explorer, you need to find the USB drive which has the SD card in it. Mine is in USB drive E. Here you'll see fonts numbered 1 through 34. We're going to scroll down to the set folder. After opening up the set folder, you'll see the config file. I'm opening this up with the default text editor on Windows. This program is called Notepad. Full screen this. Here you're going to see all the settings on your saber. The top two settings, pixel number and sub pixel number. Uh, will likely not need to be changed unless you're using a short blade. The pixel number should be 105 if you're using a shorter blade, but it should be the default if you're using a standard blade with your saber. We do not offer any sabers with the cross guard, so you shouldn't need to change the sub pixel number. Moving on to the power on and power off times, this will control how long you need to hold the button for the saber to turn on and for the saber to turn off. All of these numbers are in milliseconds, so 2,000 is 2 seconds, and 10,000 is 10 seconds. Moving on to the next settings, you have the channel volume. By default, this is set to 7,500. I don't recommend changing this setting. If you change this setting, you could damage your speaker. The next thing that we have is the mixer volume max. By default, this is set to 4500. Do not change the setting or make it more than 4500. If you do, only make this number lower. Putting it over 4500 will definitely damage your speaker. The next setting that we have is the clash sensitivity. Uh, by default, it is set to 1.5. If you make that number smaller, it will increase the sensitivity of the saber. So clashes will be much more frequent. Next, we have our gesture controls. These ones control the stabbing to ignite and deignite the saber. To turn one of these settings on, you set the number as 1, and to turn it off, you set it as 0. You can see by default, the stab power on is activated on the saber, and the stab power off is deactivated. The next setting that we have is another gesture control. This will allow you to twist the saber to ignite it. It also allows you to twist the saber to deignite the saber. By default, you can see that both of these are activated. If you would like to deactivate either of these, you just set that number 1 to 0. The next setting that we have is the twist sensitivity. The higher this number, the more sensitive the saber will be to twisting controls. You then have your swing power on gesture control. Uh, by default, this is activated. Then we can go on to the swing power on sensitivity. By default, this is 1,000. I wouldn't change any of these numbers or just leave them as they are. They work perfect at these settings. 
We then have your fonts 1 through 34. Going through the front line, you start with the RGB color value, as shown on the first note line here. Now, when trying to figure out what to set for this color value, I recommend going on Google and typing in RGB color picker. Once you do this, you can slide around the slider to get the color you want your saber to be. You can also take the RGB value from a font that already is on the config file and type it into the RGB color picker to see what color it is currently. The next number on the font line is for the light effect of each font. As you can see here, fire blade equals zero, steady blade equals one, pulse blade is two, rainbow blade is three, candy blade is four, unstable blade five, and unstable blade two is six. The following number on the font line is for the ignition speed. This controls how quickly the saber will ignite. The next number is for the deignition speed, which controls how quickly the saber will retract. These numbers are milliseconds, so 200 is about 0.2 seconds, and 800 is about 0.8 seconds. The next number is the blade style assigned to that font. Standard blade equals 0, blaster blade equals 1, ghost blade equals 2, velocity blade equals 3, torch blade equals 4. And then numbers 5 through 11 are assigned to special prions. Similar to the standard blade setting, these control the ignition effect. These are unlike numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4, which actually control the effects on the blade while it is ignited. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to add a font onto your saber. For this, I'm going to copy color line 34 and paste it below. Then change the number from 34 to 35 on the color line. I'm then going to open up the RGB color picker and find a color I like. Remember those numbers and put them in for the first three values on that line. Mine are 0, 255, and 251. For this font, we're going to select a steady blade by entering number 1 for the next number. We're going to leave the on-off speeds at 0.5 seconds for both. And then we are going to leave the last number as zero to select a standard blade ignition. The next thing we have to do is go back onto the SD card. For this video, we're going to copy font 34 sounds and use them for font 35. Copy file 34 on the SD card and paste it back into the same folder. Then change the folder's name to 35 to match the font that you created in the config text file. If you download a font from a sound font creator online, please make sure to download one from a safe source. Also ensure that the font is formatted for a Xenopixel soundboard. To add this font on your saber, you'll follow the same exact steps. Instead of copying the sound files from font 34, you're going to take the sound files from the font that you downloaded and drag them into the new sound fonts folder. As an example, say that we didn't like the clash effects in font 35 and we want to change them with another font. Like font 22's clash effects. We can go into font 22, highlight all of the clash effects that you like, copy these sound files, go back to font 35's folder, and then paste these sound files in this folder. Click yes to replace the files in the destination. And now font 35 has all of the sounds from font 34, but it also has the clash effects from font 22.
and you can mix any sound files from any of the different fonts in any order you would like. Just make sure that the sound file names are correct. Please make sure to save the changes in the config file before closing your text editor. Click save. I'm going to close the RGB color picker. And then the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure to safely eject the USB drive which has your SD card. To do this, right click the USB drive and then click eject. Your computer should notify you when it is safe to remove the USB drive from the computer. We're going to take the USB drive out and go back to our saber. After putting the SD card back into the saber, you can then put the battery back into the saber and twist on the handle just like you took it off. To put the SD card back into a Type A core, just line the SD card up with the slot and push it back into the board. To put the SD card back into a Type B core, open up the hinge, line the SD card up with the slot, close the hinge, and while pushing down on the cover, slide it down. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please let us know and we'll be happy to help you.